How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna make this really cool, satisfying kind of icy render. But before we get into that, let me shout out today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by CinePack. CinePack is the ultimate pack of easy to use professional cinematic camera moves made for Blender. This comes with 40 plus animation presets and these were made by a cinematographer with over 10 plus years of experience. This pack makes camera movement a simple drag and drop workflow helping you get to that next step in your animation. I've used this pack for a couple days already and it's been really beneficial. It's sped up my workflow. I've been doing a couple product renders and it was really easy just drag and drop these things it really made my renders do something really special. Even with a project I use today, just a simple circular motion, put it in there, made it super easy. There are tons of professional looking, incredible animations here. You can check it out, link in the top line of the description. Now let's get into the tutorial. All right, so here we have the project file. If you want to grab the project file, it is available on my Patreon, along with a bunch of really cool things like 10 procedural materials a month. Uh, you get two exclusive tutorials, different things like that. All of that is listed in the description. You can check out the Patreon there. Uh, but let's get into how to create this really cool scene. We're going to be using cycles. Specifically, we're using cycles because we want to be able to see through the glass to this really cool metallic cube on the inside. So what are we going to do? It's we're going to go new, general, don't save. And we're going to go from EV to cycles. Make sure you're using GPU if you have it. And if you have optics enabled stuff, be sure to use optics because we need all the speed we can get. So first off, we're going to make that ground plane. We're going to give it S8, make it nice and big, hit scale. And we're going to get that cube going right now. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and hit Z and click material preview. And let's give it a new material and we're gonna make it transmissive, and we're gonna bring the roughness somewhere to here. And now we have this. What we're gonna do now is head into cycles. Now, right now there's no lighting happening. If you wanna make some um, default HDRIs hit the scene, you can click this little drop down and click that and click that. So now we have a nice piece of glass. What I'm gonna do is first, so we're gonna go ahead and add in a solidify right here. And what that's gonna do is make the glass actually be a certain amount of thickness. So now we have, you know, the glass about that thick and that looks pretty cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and bevel it. So I'm gonna go to solid view to view the beveling because it's not too heavy. And let's go click on the bevel modifier, use the amount to just say how much you want it beveled. And what this is gonna allow us to do is fake lighting on our surface. And that's what we're gonna do. A lot of that glare you saw in the animation was actually faked with a Fresnel node. Um, so we're gonna be doing that. So we're gonna have it beveled right about there. And so if you wanna see how the glass looks now, it's nice and thick, has a good amount of thickness to it. And then let's go ahead and duplicate this cube, bring it in, and then let's give it a new material here. So minimize that, click new, and just go ahead and make it metallic. Now we have a nice metallic cube inside of our other cube. Let's take the cube here, hold shift, take that, and we're gonna bring them up because they are gonna rotate. So we wanna make sure that when it does rotate, it's not actually intersecting with the plane, which it is, so let's bring it up. And so now we have that. Let's go ahead and start shading these guys. Head on over to shading. We're gonna click on the first cube, and I'm gonna go to rendered view and give it scene world, scene lights, so we can have some nice lighting. And we're gonna bring this up. We're gonna get a mix shader and get an emission. So search emission bring that into this shader. And now we're gonna start faking some of the lighting on this cube to make it glare and glow and make it look really cool. So we'll get a color ramp here, plug the color into the factor, we'll get in our layer weight node and we're gonna use facing. Actually, let's use Fresnel. I believe I used Fresnel in the original animation. And if we can play with that blend and bring up the brightness, give it some blue and give the strength that say like 50, we can go ahead and play with that for now until the lighting only sticks within the beveled edge here. That's kind of what we're gonna, we want. So there we go. And that makes it look like light is actually clipping the edges and it makes it look really cool. So let's go ahead and hit this and hit, <clears throat> hit shift D, plug the roughness there. Let's get a noise texture here. Now, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, Control T gets you a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. We'll use the object coordinate here, and then plug the factor into the color ramp, and bring this in, 
bring that in. Scale of one, maybe scale of two. There we go. Now we have some interesting roughness going on. Maybe we can bring that in some more. Bring up the detail. Bring up the roughness a little bit. So now we can see through the cube, but there's some roughness happening, so it's really interesting. Last thing I want to do is add a little bit of displacement on the glass to make it wobble around, and that's what I think will be really cool for this piece. And that's just going to be a little bit of simple displacement here. So we're going to get a little bump node, not displacement, sorry, bumping. And we're going to get in a musgrave. Musgrave, plug the vector into the vector, height into the height. So now it looks all insane and crazy. That's where we want to mess with the strength. We'll make the scale at two and make the strength something like this. So how is it looking? Let's see, maybe a little bit more wobbly. Something like that looks pretty cool. Maybe make the strength at three and then bring the strength down. Sorry, the scale at three, the strength down. And now it's kind of wobbly, looks pretty cool. And if we go here and hit this little drop down, we actually have some lighting going on with this for now, which is what we're looking for. You can see how it kind of goofs around and gets that really cool look. That's what we're going for. All right, so now we're done here. What I want to do is click on the ground plane and start shading that. So we're going to click new. I want to make it metallic. Let's get in a color ramp and play with the uh, ground surface roughness. I'm actually going to be doing, I want to do this in cycles just to see how it's looking. So plug the color into the roughness. So zoom in here for you guys. We'll get in a noise texture, control T, use the object coordinate here, and use the factor. And so we'll bring up the detail here, bring up the roughness, bring the scale to 0 0.5, and now we have something pretty cool. Simple, but pretty cool. And then here, what I don't like is how rough this particular part is. I want to make it a little less rough, so we click on the white, bring it closer to the black, so now it's just a subtle amount of roughness. You can see it better if we turn off the uh, viewport denoising. So now you can see how it looks a little bit better. All right, let's go ahead and start getting some lighting happening here other than the fake lighting we've already implemented. So let's go ahead and get a cube and scale it to fit the whole scene. Control A, and then we'll hit Control A, apply the scale. And what I want to do is here in the shading, having the cube selected, Having the big cube we just added in selected, click new. We'll delete the principled, add in a volume, a principled volume, plug it to the volume here, and give the density at like 0 0.5, something like that. Maybe 0 0.1, that'll do. And then to really make that volume really look cool and really work, we're gonna get in an area light. We'll bring the area light up to be something way up here, make it blue, and then make your power at like 500. Now that's pretty cool. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get that camera to go around in a circle. So I'm just gonna hide this big cube for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my camera here. Click the camera. Now we're gonna click on my curve circle. Now, click on the camera. We need to add a constraint to it. So add constraint, follow path, right here, bezier circle, and then we can click on the circle and drag it out, and then we can bring it up. Now, if we want this thing to rotate, it's not gonna work quite as well. You can see how the camera is looking straight the whole time. So what we're gonna do is, I believe it's negative X and follow curve, and now we have it looking the way we want. So that's how that's gonna happen. So now let's go ahead and start animating this. So we can actually get this circle curve and bring it out farther, maybe bring it down, and then clicking on the camera, I'm just gonna have him look up a little bit. And let's see how that's looking. Looks pretty good. We can even bring that volume back in and see how everything's looking so far. Let's go ahead and animate it. So I'm gonna click on my cube so let's go ahead and animate this. So we'll click on the camera, go to the constraint, and we'll go, I'm gonna keep mine at 250 frames. I'm gonna click the back arrow to go to frame zero, and then I'm gonna click right here to make a keyframe, go to the end, 100, add your keyframe, and now he's going in a perfect circle. Now if your camera slows down and speeds up when it starts and stops, you'll wanna go to the preferences, 
hit on the animation here just to make sure what your default interpolation is. And you could switch that to linear and then redo your animation super quick. And so we can do that right there. And so far we have a pretty cool animation. We can preview it here in Eevee, maybe even go to scene world, scene lights. And that's how we have it so far. We have a couple more things to do. We have a particle system and object rotation. So let's go ahead and get that particle system working first. We're gonna use a different plane to implement our particle system. So what that's gonna do is we're gonna get a plane, hit S8, and then we're gonna just bring it up a little bit, hit tab so we can right click, subdivide, and give it, um, we'll give it 50, because we want to actually uh, displace this guy. So shift A, we're gonna get our particle object, which is gonna be a UV sphere. Um, we're gonna bring our subdivisions up to three, so now we have this nice little box, I mean, <laughs> nice little circle. So now we have our object here. I'm gonna click on that, click there, and switch from principal to emission. Give it a nice subtle blue, give it a strength of say 30. Now he's glowing, I'm gonna shade smooth. So click on this guy, particle system, hit the plus icon, we'll click hair, and then right here on render, go from path to object. And then I'm gonna click this little eyedropper, select my object, and now we have that. We're gonna go here to scale randomness, bring the scale down pretty significantly. In fact, I want the scale to be even smaller. So we're gonna click on this and make our hair length pretty small. These are gonna be really, really small particles. And then let's go and displace it. So let's go and hit displace bring the modifier above particles so the particles move with displacement. I'm gonna control A, apply scale, because I forgot to do that. Click new, and we're gonna add clouds. Bring the depth down, bring your scale, something like this. And then, last thing we need to do is add a wireframe just to make this guy kind of disappear, kind of a cheeky way to make it disappear. And watch our particles. If we bring up the strength of the displacement, now our particles are rising up and down, and that's really cool, and that's what we wanna do. So now we have this going around. It's really cool, and it's really beautiful. Darby, you are so loud, I cannot. Hi. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? Oh, you missed me? No. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and rotate this cube right here. I'm just gonna make sure he is selected. I'm gonna go here, go back to frame zero, go here to the rotation, and I'm gonna zero everything out right here. So what I'm gonna do is animate these two axes. So I'm gonna go and just drag that, and then I'm gonna type in 360, and then 720. What that's gonna do is make this one rotate faster than this one. So the axes are actually rotating on a different speed, so it's actually really cool and really interesting. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna click on that cube. So I'm gonna hide him, click on this cube, make sure he is selected by hitting that, all right. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just zero everything out. And then I'm gonna do these two axes. So we'll do this right here, drag that. We'll go to the end and I'll type in negative 720 and 360. And then now he's doing his thing, we're doing that. If we go to the wireframe view, we can see they're kind of moving in their own way. It's pretty cool. And that's gonna do that. So now if we check out the rendered view, we can click this, kind of see how that's looking. I'm gonna go ahead and in the first cube, just make the emission a good bit brighter. Let's give it like 85. And then what I'm gonna do is do a test render so we can go into the compositing. So let me find a spot where it's really bright, something like that. We have a good L of brightness in the cube render, render image. All right, so now that your image is finished rendering, we're gonna head over to compositing. I'm gonna hit Shift A and add in a viewer node. Click that. We're gonna bring this into that. Now I'm gonna hold down Shift, right click, and drag that so everything that goes in this line goes straight into these nodes, which is super important if you wanna animate it. So I'm gonna hit Shift A and get in a glare node right here. Plug that there, and now we have a bunch of glare going on. I'm gonna go from streaks to fog glow, and now we have a nice amount of glow going throughout our whole scene. Now, if you want to denoise this image, 
what, we'll, what you'll do is head on over to this little cards icon looking thing and click on denoising data. I'm gonna click that and then we're gonna get in a denoise node right here. Denoise, plug that there. We're gonna plug the noisy image into the image, noisy normal, noisy albedo, and that will be ready for your next render. So now you can see it's already kind of denoising. It's terrible. We need to re-render it for the new noise settings. Last thing I need to do here, which I forgot to do, is we need to get some depth of field going. So I'm gonna hit Shift A and get in an empty plane axis, and we'll just bring it straight into the middle here, and that's gonna be our focus object. We're gonna to go to the render view, go to camera, click on the camera, depth of field, we're gonna select that empty, and then we're just gonna bring our blades up, our f-stop down till you like the blurriness of the particles, but not making this cube too blurry. So it looks like 0 0.3, Maybe 0 0.4 is pretty good for me. And then actually I kind of want to uh, click on this circle here and bring it a little closer to my cube just for composition. And just to make sure, still like it. Looks pretty awesome. Click on the rendered view, see how it's looking. We have this nice cool cube. We have another cube inside. Playing with the for now can make it a little bit brighter. Um, and then we can pretty much go from here. What I'm gonna do is give myself 200 samples. That's kind of all I needed for this and then check out the render and I'll show you how to export it. All right, here we go. This is the finished render. We have some nice roughness going here on the ground, nice depth of field with these particles, this really beautiful glowing cube. And then just to render it, you'll hit to render, render animation, but for your settings, we're gonna go here, click on where you wanna save it. You can either do a PNG sequence and just render that out, or you can click on FFmpeg video, which compiles it all for you. So you click on MP4, um, medium quality to perceptually lossless, and you'll be ready to go. Render, render animation, and when you're done, you'll get something really cool like this. I hope you enjoyed it. You can, again, you can grab that project file on Patreon if you'd like, along with the, all the other stuff on there. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.